Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue with silver, official weight, 139 pounds. As a professional, his record is perfect. 41 bouts, 41 victories, including 30 knockouts. From Manchester, England, the former WBA welterweight world champion and former IBF WBA and universally recognized undisputed light welterweight champion of the world, the undefeated Ricky Hickman Hatton. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, official weight, 139 pounds. Professional record, 18 bouts, with 17 victories, including 13 knockouts and one draw. Fighting out of Hollywood, Florida, originally from Monteria, Colombia. Presenting the reigning, defending, undefeated IBF light welterweight champion of the world, Juan Iron Twin. Let's go now. Let's go. Okay, gentlemen, caballeros, you already received your instructions. Ustedes recibió your instructions. Okay, right here is good. If that's going to be low. Yeah, aquí está bien, aquí no. Right here is good. If that's going to be low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. I want a good, clean fight. You can do not play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Escúchame, cuídate. Listo? Ready? Let's go. Vamos. Fighting an aggressive fighter like Urango. Hatton says he will not always fight fire with fire in this fight. There is a rumor that he may have some boxing skills. Hatton starts fast as always. Yeah, but he does have some boxing skills. I Ask think he, he shows that. It shows that in a couple Ask of fights. And that's the one reason that I like him a lot better than a lot of anxiety type young fighters. He still boxes very well. As they broke apart from the opening clinch, Irango ripped oh, Hatton's oh, 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 cheek oh, 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 with a right hook. But Ricky Hatton can take a shot. That's one of the things that makes him so special. One of the greatest coincidences in the sport, Larry Merchant. If Hatton wins tonight, he gets his record to 42 and 0. Great Britain's other tremendously dominant champion, Joe Calzaki of Wales, at 168 pounds, is 42 and 0. You know, I notice it's very, I'm looking at the size of the gloves, and it's really obvious right away the gloves that Ricky Hatton had on look so big. This is a, and I was aware of the fact that. He's wearing 10 ounce gloves for the very first time. Not, yes, and normally these are the gloves that fights like fighters like Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis have normally fought in. But now Nevada has a rule. I think for anyone over 135 pounds has to wear the same gloves that the, which guys like Lennox Lewis, which is about 100 pounds bigger. And here than, you see than, Hatton. Than Hatton. Hatton standing the boxing. outside doing not fighting fire with fire. So Larry, the point is made already. If Hatton wants to, he can go into a stance and begin to use his jab and box. And already he's showing that he intends to do it tonight. That's not Rango, even though he's physically looking like a very strong muscle guy, he's, he's really not that busy. He's waiting to counter punch. And you know, if Hatton throws so many punches, it's going to be very difficult for him to just counter punch. Had yes, punches because they come in volumes. In addition to his footwork, oh, Ricky's spice, moving in and out, a lot more body movement as well as foot movement. And now to solidify the other story you introduced, Emmanuel, Nevada, the only place which 
has instituted the safety measure requiring all fighters down to 135 to wear 10 ounce gloves. Do you think it truly makes fighters safer? I, I can't say, but I mean, we have to start somewhere. You know, they had so many deaths, particularly in Nevada in the last year, more than probably any other major state, but they have so many fights here that they're just trying to find something that they can use as a gauge to see if it works out for safety. Pushing myself, I would say no. I would say with eight ounce gloves for smaller guys. I think it makes for a better fight. It is a violent sport. Maybe sometimes a better fight is a more dangerous fight, but people who install power lines or clean windows on the top of tall buildings or work in coal mines know that they're exposing themselves to danger as well. Pro football players have very difficult after lives. Patton, Boxing isn't alone. Patton consistently beat Urango to the punch in that round. Get him some good shoe shots. It's straight stuff. The finish on some straight stuff. I mean, getting involved here too quick. Step to the side a little bit. You're meeting him head on. You know what I mean? You, you, where you're good is the angles. You've got the angles. You've got the balance. Don't meet this fucking head on. You know what I mean? I'll finish on some straight stuff. Let's have a bit more of a look at him. Yeah? Come on, let's go. Let's lift up the pace. Move up the pace. Keep up the speed. You gotta finish up top. You gotta finish up top strong. He's scared of you. He's scared of you. All you have to do is pressure him. Pressure him. Throw your hands. Throw punches. Don't step backwards. Don't step back. Block your hands up and counter attack. Counter attack with three. Finishing off with your hug. How do you feel it? Good, good. Box numbers underline Larry's point that Hatton consistently beat Urango to the punch. 21 out of 85 for Hatton, 10 out of 49 for Urango. Urango came out and fought at a pace as though he's fighting against a normal guy. Oh, oh, Hatton oh, oh. is no normal guy. Yeah, and I think the, the fact that Ricky is going to make him fight at a faster pace than he normally likes to fight at is going to be a big factor going down the stretch. In particular, Ricky's having good success with his right hand through the center, well, as well as his left uppercut between the gloves. Because on record, if Durango thinks that Hatton's going to run out of gas because of the fast pace, he's probably got another thing coming. Yeah, and that's just the one thing. A lot of guys that fight, intense fighters like Ricky, they're only good for four or five rounds. Ricky Hatton is one of the few fighters that can fight the whole 12 rounds with intensity. Well, we're used to see him imposing his strength by consistent pressure on his opponents. He has opted at this point in the fight not to do that. Yeah, he's faster on his feet than Arango, which is very really interesting. Arango is much, much slower. Incidentally, in the last fight, I introduced the concept of headbutts, and though we came close, it never really happened. But here you've got a southpaw come forward fighter against a conventional come forward fighter, and if ever there was a formula for headbutts, this is it. And Hatton, incidentally, cuts like Arturo Gatti. He cuts, but he's fighting a very smart fighter. In addition to moving with his feet, his upper body movement is very good. When he finishes his punches, he angles his body a lot where he doesn't get hit afterwards. Hatton punching from various angles. Still faster than Urango midway through the second round. Urango hoping perhaps that he can impose bigger power and make himself a factor later in the fight. Durango's got a terrific looking body. He's built like a junior middleweight oh, at 140 pounds. <laughs> Claims he doesn't lift weights at all, but the, the width of that back and yeah, the depth of his pectoral sure makes him look that way. But the, the fact all of those muscles is what to me is seemingly slowing him down. Stop, stop. Ricky is naturally strong, loose, flexible, and it's much more fluid with his punches and his movement. Come on, is going to have to step up the pace a little bit, unless he considers himself a devastating one-punch knockout guy, because he's falling further behind on points. And the foot movement that Hatton is showing here, far superior to what seemed to be the case against Luis Galazzo in Boston last year, when he was fighting seven pounds north at 147. The layman says, how can it make that much difference, Emmanuel? It makes a big difference. I mean, everybody's body is cut off at a certain point where you can you can lose weight at a certain point, and if you go beyond that, you're not effective in the same way. When you're fighting those middleweights, is really what those guys at 147 are. They're coming for 160 normally. But it's a normal 160. Yeah. By and large, through the first two rounds, Hatton landing two to every one that Urango lands.
Tiene que tirar tú primero. You've got to be okay. first, no man. Be first. Tire. Don't wait for him to throw. Be first. Okay. Jab, jab, and throw your hands. Tiene que meterle más presión. You've got to pressure him more. Throw more punches. You understand? We're losing. We're losing. We're down. Come on, we're down. You got to be strong from the first round. Throw hard punches. Hard punches. You understand? You feeling good? All right. He's hitting you and he's hugging you. He's hitting you and he's grabbing. But come on, lively, lively. Give me one. I'm sticking with a screw shot. That we did in the gym last week. The work for this kid. He's strong now. He'll get weaker as the fight goes on. But not if you're using too much energy. It's looking over if I can steal the rest, you know what I'm saying? Copy box numbers continue to make the point we're talking about. In that round, Urango 11 of 49, Hatton 26 out of 62. It's not very hard for a judge to score a round like that. Hard right hand coming up and under by Ricky Hatton. And remember, Hatton may expose himself to some damage by fighting the way he does. But he's proven he can take a shot. Stood in for 11 no, no, rounds no, no, against has, the extremely hard punching Costa Zu and made Zu quit on his stool. And he fought at a very good tempo for the entire fight. But this fight here, he, he's given one he of the best exhibitions I've saw in the boxing. I know he did it with Ben Tacky, but he's fighting a very beautiful fight tonight in terms of technical fight. Well, I love the phrase he used in his conversation with Larry Merchant yesterday. You don't always fight fire with fire. See, that's the difference between he and Diego Corrales. Diego feels regardless of who he's fighting, he's got to show that he's more macho than they are. Even if he's six foot tall and he's fighting a guy five feet six. Pass for miles, leave us. Hatton mixing body punches in with consistent flow upstairs. Urango seeming to look to land one big shot and simply getting swamped in the punch output department for right now. Now there's a nice little right hook inside by Juan Urango. Hasn't really managed to land his left so stop, far. Stop. Well, even when he throws his left, he doesn't seem to have the power that his right hand has, even though he fights, but that probably is because of the fact he said he's really not a southpaw. Again, look at his left hand, he doesn't really punch with it with that much authority. Like marvelous Marvin Hagler, like Michael Moore, who lost his heavyweight championship to George Foreman, a right-handed guy who fights in a southpaw stance. Yeah, and Marvin hurt a lot of people with his right hand. There's yeah. a right hook that backs Hatton up a little bit. Or oh, Ricky was on, actually already backing up when he got caught with the punch. Urango seems to understand now that he needs to step up the pace if he's going to stay in the fight. This cornerman gave him some great instructions. He's not going to win the fight, fight at the pace that he's fighting at. He's got to step up and have a lot more intensity. Good Hatton ducking and slipping after landing to the body. This is high-quality stuff Ricky Hatton has shown you in the first three rounds. Yeah, after he lands punches, he angles himself and twists off where he doesn't go straight back and he gets away from getting hit with tail end punches. Stop. Throughout the last two weeks, he has expressed huge emotion about fighting in Las Vegas. No, and has for saying, been... my hero, Roberto Duran, used to fight here. No, 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 no. No, as I saw. And, of course, he can feel the support of the crowd here, just as in Manchester, where the house would be packed with 22,000 all screaming But I him. tell you what, Durango is stop, making stop, stop, stop. him really fight it. Durango is, even though he's not punching that much, Durango is putting a lot of pressure on Ricky and making Ricky expand a lot of energy. Well, not for nothing as Durango won the title and is an unbeaten fighter. 13 KOs and 18 fights. He tasted your power. He tasted your power already. You got it? Press him. Press him. He doesn't like it. He knows you've got a hard hand. Come on, go in with three punches, a combination. You gotta throw more, throw more, in and out, in and out, throw. There yeah, you see Rango coming back with a... Okay. You gotta drain this kid, you gotta drain him. You understand? A little bit key, you feel okay? Right here you see Ricky Hatton throw a right hand, perfectly timed, right between those gap of the gloves, and he called Arango. And in fact, he's been very effective punching between the gloves tonight on the, all night long on Arango. And right here, you see Arango come right back with a beautiful right punch. And that is the type of a punch that Ricky has to watch out for. The tail end punches that he gets hit with sometimes. It might help happen tonight that the last outing was also against the southpaw, Luis Galazzo. And Galazzo tattooed him a lot with 
good right hooks. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through three? Jim three to nothing, Wilson. third and a 27, Honestly, Ricky Hatton. He's outworking him, Jim. He's landing him more shots, and he's winning the fight, even though I think he's going the wrong direction, going to his right all night. But, you know, Jim, I got to comment on something you said in the first round. Those boxing gloves, that glove is almost up to Ricky Hatton's elbow. I've never seen a glove that high on a fighter since Roy Jones boxed John Ruiz and had to use those 10-ounce grants, which were the same thing. But anyway, 3-0, 30-27, to Hatton. Hatton's trainer, Billy Graham, told Harold Letterman that the size of the glove makes it harder for Ricky to get his punches into the spaces where normally he would be able to fit an 8-ounce glove in. Fascinating. You don't think it could make that big a difference, but Graham said he just can't land the same kinds of shots because sometimes he can't find the gap as well. With the clean shots he's landing, how much more damage? Would he have done with eight ounce gloves? Has me, oh, it has me, has me. Paulus Levens. This, this Emmanuel, fight, what do you think? This fight well, might have been over already. What do you think, Rick Emmanuel? Is not a, right Rick, about that? Rick is not a devastating one punch puncher anyway. He's a balanced out fighter. But I think that it would have been a more exciting fight. I do think he would have landed it much more cleaner and, and, and punches and had a lot more effect. But right now, the gloves, I think, are being a uh, handicap to him, as far as I can see. Of course, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Urango, Urango isn't accustomed to fighting with 10-ounce gloves either. It, it's true of both fighters here tonight. But Urango's a kind of a slower, methodical-type fight anyway, where Ricky is a more fast, explosive-type speed puncher, and I think it affects him a lot more so than a guy like Miranda, which is more of a physical-type guy, a plotter, so to say. When we have seen Hatton in recent years in his fights, no, he's been all substance and no style. Here tonight, he's showing us some style. It's Along with the substance. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Rango is putting, oh, making him still punch a lot more, whereas Rango is moving forward, pressuring him. Whereas Kasazu, was example, was just opposite. He backed back to Ricky set to tempo. So even though he's winning it, it's still it's a little pressure that's being put on him to make him punch a lot more than he likes to. Hatton did a nice job of blocking Urango's body shot with his left elbow. He's thought of mostly as an offensive fighter, but he's not without defensive skill. Very few silent moments in the fight. When Ricky Hatton is fighting, you can hear the almost constant roar that's put up by British fans here, but that round ends relatively silently, and Irango holds up his fists as if to say, now I'm beginning to take over, and instantly the crowd boos him. You're not, you're not making the effort to do it. Get yeah. round him where he can't do anything. You've just got to nullify his work. He's just going to just, all he's going to just gonna keep walking and walking and walking it down. He's going to take a bit of shifting. So, do when he comes, pop him a couple of times, then come around there. Try and get there. And if he can't get him, at least he can't do anything to you. Come on, man. Okay? Come on, come on, come on, we're down. Come on, come on, we're down. Come on, we're we're down. Down. We're we're down. Get it, come on. When Urango lifted his arms at the end of that round, the, the Brits started chanting, Uria, Uria, Uria. Manchester East for who are you? Who are you? Maybe because of the pace and the way he fights, a Hatton fight seems to go by fast. We're already in the fifth round, and it feels like the fight started about five or six yeah. minutes ago. But it, 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 it is, it, you know, your Ranga doesn't throw a lot of punches. Because if he did, it would be a much more exciting fight. But Ricky's having to make an adjustment and be prepared, I think, for himself to go for a good 12-round decision fight. And, uh, and, and Urango is trying to count him. Oh, there's a hard body shot by Urango, which Tony Weeks deems to be below the guard. And Hatton steps away momentarily, but doesn't bother to take any more time than that. Hatton stepping forward and throwing right hand leads. Classic tactic against the southpaw. He hasn't done it all that much, but that's an adjustment you might see more and more frequently through the rest of the fight. 
Good right hook to the body by Urango. Tony Weeks speaks Spanish and quite frequently will use it to try to get Urango to hear his instructions in there. Good body shot again by Urango. It seems as though Juan Urango has made a decision here to drop his attack and go to the ribcage. It's an adjustment that Hatton hasn't yet adjusted to. Yeah, I think he's following the orders from his corner from the last round. They told him he's going to have to pick it up. He's losing the fight. He's going to have to step to him a little bit more, and he's doing just that. Now Hatton fires a body shot to the ribcage of Urango, lands that right up the middle again, but once again, Urango pops him to the body and hurts him. Urango's landing very good body punches this round. Rick is not boxing and moving as well as he was before. He's leaning in a lot more on those punches. They're getting caught with body punches. Smart tactic by Urango to switch to the body punches. Hatton was beating him to the punch upstairs consistently. Now Ricky has slowed down, and Urango's pace is rising. It seems like those body punches have hurt Ricky, and, he, and he's still a, a hurt by it right now. We'll give Urango credit. He's made an adjustment in this fight. Normally, he comes forward looking to counter his opponent. Now he's been willing to take the lead. A lot of fighters find it extremely difficult to land left hooks against the southpaw, but it not so quick. He's been able to get in his left hook upstairs against Durango. Still, more and more often going to the straight right-hand lead. Durango's Rang most damaging punches seem to be his right hand, particularly the right hand to the body. Now, during this round, We've been watching Jose Luis Castillo, who got a narrow escape, split decision in the first fight against Herman in Gujo, and has a possible date with Hatton later this year. We already told you what a big fan of the sport Castillo is, but there's a lot more to this than being a fan. He's got money on the table, he is rooting for the guy in the light blue, trunk, blue trunks, and he is watching intently. Up, Manager he's Fernando the Beltran standing right behind, he's counting the money. Well, he's, not, he's not one allowed. Do you understand? You know, Cage, so I don't I think it's going to take a lot of shifting. Mm -hmm. Get right and stick him with straight shots. Get to the side, stick him with straight shots. And stick him with straight shots. Hey, I got hurt the ball. Hold, hold on, hold on. Push him off. Push him off. Push him off. This fight is ours. Push him out with your body. Come on. Work him, buddy. Work his body. Work his body. There was a sea change in CompuBox numbers in the fifth round. Suddenly, Urango landing 23 out of 52 power shots and Hatton only 13 out of 41. The simple adjustment of dropping his attack from upstairs to the body paid huge dividends for Juan Urango. And hey. Castillo, watching in his dressing room, may be saying, hey, the body is where it's at, baby. That's where you're supposed to fight. And I see a little concern in Ricky Hatton's corner a little bit. I think for the first time, after feeling his strength and power, of Urango, he has a little bit more respect for Urango. And now this time, it's Urango who gets a chance to rest after what Tony Weeks deemed to be a low shot from Hatton. Tony Weeks telling Urango, you've got five minutes if you want him, and Urango looks as though he's going to take a good long time to come back from this one. Now he's ready. A fighter doesn't want to take so long to recover from the low blow that he gets cold, but on the other hand, he doesn't want to go back into the ring compromised. Yeah, but very seldom will you see a fighter take the four or five minutes. I think a lot of them because of the pride and the fact that they really just want to get back to the fight after that. Because when you have a protection cup on, usually it's very seldom to get really that seriously hurt. That's why they have the rule that you can't win a fight by a, a low blow, so to say, unless you just had a series of them. And they just stopped the fight from over. Not one single low blow. Now, after what happened in the last round, it appears that Hatton is coming back in this round to say, okay, you want to go to the body? I'll show you go into the body. I can match you body shot for body shot. Hatton upstairs with the right hand. Pace of the fight changed. Another body shot from Hatton right in the middle of Urango's belly. And Urango kind of nodding as if to say, all right, we're fighting now. Yeah, Lorenzo's a very physically strong fighter. The more I'm watching him, the more I'm respecting his physical strength, if nothing else. Hatton again with that thudding left hook upstairs. Rango lands his right hook. Again, they trade body shots in close. Weeks has got a lot of work in, in front of him tonight. Two guys who do go forward 
and throw a lot of punches from different angles. Clinch. Body shot. Stop, stop. Low blow. Clinch. Body shot. Low blow. Tony Weeks is sweating in there. This is the, the mauling style that we've seen Hatton in often. Uh, throwing one or two punches and falling stop, stop. in. Well, he's succeeded in slowing Urango down with the body attack in the first two minutes of this okay, round, okay, Emmanuel. Okay. So far, the fight has turned back in his favor again. He's fighting pretty much at the tempo he wants to fight at, and he's landing, he's outboxing and now punching Urango at this point. Stop. Urango again tries to hammer Hatton to the body with the right hand. Now Urango says, all right, let's go upstairs again. Hatton lands a left hook. Stop, stop. Very few fighters have fans backing with this kind of passion that you feel in this room. About 6,500, 7,000 people, well over a million dollar gate. Hatton used to fighting before crowds three times as big in Manchester. Well, there's no question that the 22,000 Mancunians, as they called him, were a huge factor for Hatton in his win over Costa Zoo. Zoo the veteran professional didn't necessarily seem intimidated by the crowd, but discouraged for sure. Right, come on. You can't let him hug you. Push him off. Push him off. And attack the body. Don't let him grab you. He just wants to waste time. He just wants to waste time. That's it. He doesn't let you work. Mr. you. You cannot have this guy marching forward, slinging shots at you, and you do all the fucking work. You understand what I mean, don't you? Right, well, do you believe me? I do believe you. Right, so well, close. Here you see Hadden land a low blow right there, and, and, and it was right there at the point where I don't think he did a lot of really super serious damage, but enough for him to lose the round past the point on him. That particular shot by Urango right on the belt, of course, was on the opposite side of Tony Weeks, who's working as hard as he can, but yeah. can't possibly see everything. No, he couldn't see. Now, I've made a mistake on that. I don't think he was, you know, maybe lost round. He just got a caution from the referee for the move. Adams 28 total connects in that round, his highest number for the fight. And after Urango had doubled him in power shots the round before, Hatton turned around and tripled Urango in that round. So, Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> Look at you, 59, 55. Five rounds to one, Ricky Hatton. You know, Jim, after a great fifth round, Juan Urango just didn't fight the sixth round. I can't understand that. I mean, I thought he had him figured out. He goes back into a damn thing in round six. But, you know, Ricky Hatton really impresses me. I'm sure he's impressing the judges. He's got a hell of a variety. Left uppercuts, stop, stop, right stop. uppercuts, left hooks, right hooks, straight right hand leads. If you watch the punches, it's amazing how many things he does. Five, one, Hatton. And you keep expecting him to tire. You keep thinking, well, nobody can fight 180 seconds of every round like this. But, Emmanuel? He has great stamina, but there's one thing that he does after a lot of his punches sometimes. He does take a little break on his little clinches and tie up him to get his win. Right, right there. Yes, right there. Separate, separate. It's a different way of resting than what most other fighters do. Yeah, and it doesn't, it's not a prolonged clinch where you could say, well, he's holding. He does it just enough to take a little breather. So I guess he deserves a few beers after a night of work like this, huh? <laughs> you know what makes Ricky Haddon so popular, and I'm one of his Biggest best fans, fans and is my buddy, too, you know. It's not just his exciting style of boxing, but his personality is just so engaging. And to be a successful person and to remain humble is one of the greatest attributes you can have, and he has it. Well, he's, he's kind of a cross between a, a Rottweiler and a Golden Retriever. In the Maybe ring, he's a Rottweiler. Maybe the one person in the sport who is least his fan is another British fighter oh, no, no. named Junior Witter, stop, stop, stop. who holds a title in this weight class and who is constantly clamoring for a chance to fight Hatton. And Hatton doesn't like Witter any more than Witter likes Hatton, and Ricky keeps saying, I'll never fight him. That's the most money he could ever make, and I'm just not going to give it to him. And he's right. He's right about the money, that's for sure. Whether he'll continue to resist and never fight him remains another question. I can remember when Oscar De Hoya spent years saying he would never fight stop, Fernando stop. Vargas. And he, he ultimately used that tactic to set Vargas up to fight him in exactly the way he wanted him to yeah, fight him, too. I, I agree with you, Jim. They'll, they'll fight someday. 
uh, later in uh, Hatton's career, after he's tried to make as much money as he can in the U.S. Stop, stop. Uh, perhaps with, or probably with Castillo, uh, maybe Mayweather way down the road. Irango takes the chance of raising his gloves again, and again, the crowd immediately jumps on him for it. Mosley Colazzo, that's an interesting matchup. Remember, Colazzo's the guy who gave Hatton so much trouble last year in Boston. Vivian Harris trying to come back. And Miguel Cotto, maybe the most damaging body puncher in the sport now, against a Thai Urkal in Puerto Rico. You might get a pit of the stomach if you get around him anyway. Don't stand in front of this fucker and don't stand off him too much. Pop, 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 Left upper hand. Okay, right, okay. Le Let the upper hand. hand. Throw, throw, throw. He's winning time. He's earning. He's moving okay. around. Okay. That's, that's his first benefit, but we've got four rounds. We've got to take this time. Come on. Push him and throw. Comedy box numbers through seven, and incidentally, there are five rounds to go. You okay. might want to. Mentioned that Urongo's corner, not four. Gambi box numbers through seven. Average per round. Urongo 13 out of 48. Stop, stop. Hatton 23 out of 70. Bringing up the question immediately: Can you win a fight throwing only 48 punches per round against a guy like Ricky Hatton? And you know what's so interesting to me, and and I think in Urongo's mind, he's winning this fight. Well, and everybody separate. in his corner is telling him one thing, but I think. He himself is convinced that he's winning this fight, and if he keeps that mindset and doesn't pick up his pace, he's going to be very shocked at the decision. Very interesting. You'll, you'll recall in the preceding fight, Jose Luis Castillo told the guys in his corner, what are you talking about? I'm not losing this fight. I'm not having trouble. Shortly after that, the most veteran judge of the group, Chuck Jampa, gave the last three rounds of the fight to Ngojo. There's a big right hand upstairs by Juan Urongo. You know, I always wanted if Urongo use his right jab what he, how effective he could be because he is right-handed and he just doesn't stop, use stop. his right jab, which is a difference between guys like him and Marvelous Marvin Hagen. I always he, wonder about any fighter who doesn't Hansford. liberally use his jab. Hansford, Hansford, stop, stop. George Foreman's greatest line, I always thought as their expert commentator back in his years of sitting in your chair, Emmanuel, was it, this sport is easy if you have a jab. George Foreman knocked out a lot of people by setting them up with a jab, jab, like he did Michael Moore, and they never saw the right hand. Well, it's probably truer in the heavyweight division, but we could always tell when Lennox Lewis's great nights were coming. That was when he threw more than 30 jabs per round. If he didn't, he was vulnerable. I've always, I don't care which fighter if I've worked with, I believe in the left jab always. I think that's the most important key punch in boxing. Or in Urongo's case, the right jab. The right jab in this case. Everybody talks about the new Colombian middleweight, Edison Miranda, and his monster right hand. But his left jab eats up the ring. He it looks almost yeah. like Lennox Lewis in there. You never see the right hand because you become so stop, preoccupied stop. with the left jab. Durango just not throwing enough jabs to give Hatton an initial stop, stop. problem to deal with. But he feels that he's winning the fight still. Well, he's a confident athlete, very calm. Taking a punch right through the middle of the guard as Ricky Hatton throws a right hand lead up and under and then hammers with the left hook as he backs away. Nirango misses with the left hand and Hatton manages to tap him twice using his feet better and more rapidly than the Colombian fighter who lives in Miami. And, and Urango is fighting like a fighter who lifts weights. Uh, if he, even if he's just naturally muscle like it, the muscles are really slowing him down and his punches doesn't come off nowhere near as fast as they should. The fan is always impressed with the sculpted Kenny Norton-like body, but it isn't always the best way to be. No, outside of Mike Tyson, most of the great punches that I, I saw always were guys who were loosely built. And even Mike wasn't really that devastating after about seven rounds because muscles tire and slow down as the fight progresses. Durango still seems to think he's winning the fight. He's not, hey, or at least it would appear. What are you doing? Come on, let go. When he's holding on, push him off. Come on, you gotta be an animal. You've gotta be an animal. It's gonna be a decision for them. They're gonna vote for him. You understand? We don't win the fight that way. You've gotta pressure, pressure, throw more, throw more. Work it. If he grabs you, push him off. Come on, push, push, push. You're not. When you're inside, 
when you feel comfortable, maybe get one move, might get a pair of stomach, then you might get somewhere with him. But just one move, don't try anything flash. Don't try anything. Because he's because he's not done any work really. And he's and he's he just steam forward like a train, yeah? Tie the fucker up. Don't be the hero, right, okay? Go don't be the hero and we're going with a title, right? You saw the kid brother of Hatton at ringside with the rest of the family. He fought on the undercard and won a decision. That's Matthew Hatton, fought on the undercard earlier this evening. He has a record of about 29 and 3, I believe. Urongo has a twin brother in Colombia. In fact, his nickname is the Iron Twin. His twin brother is also a fighter, but his record is 1 and 0. You know, We've seen a number of very strong, very tough, stop, stop. very determined fighters come out of Colombia with unbeaten records, with 95% knockout records, and wind up getting Man, schooled no the holes, first no time stop, they stop. meet a good boxer. And even though Hatton is certainly not going to win any, any medals or write any books about uh, stop, classic stop. boxing, he is out boxing Durango here. Well, case in point, of course, the fabulous young prospect, Joel Julio, tremendous knockout punching power, eye-catching skills, but schooled by Carlos Quintana and faded in the heat of Las Vegas here last summer and uh, picked up his first loss. Ricardo Torres ultimately outboxed by Miguel Cotto in Atlantic City. Edison Miranda, tremendously eye-catching skills and power, etc. But he lost to Arthur Abraham, even though he broke Abraham's jaw in the fourth round. It shows that you can have a good record or whatever, but it depends on your level of competition that you're competing with. Well, and it, it, it also it, depends on the level of training oh, no, you're getting. Stop. Hard right hand by Urango. But generally for Juan Urango, through the middle portion of the fight, it's been one punch at a time. Since that round, in which he put together a lot of body punches, clearly won the round, gave Hatton trouble, Hatton has continued to be able to flow and put his punches together in combination and swamp Urango in total output, which is very eye-catching to the judges. Rick is fighting a very smart fight when you consider that, that, you know, he's fighting a guy who comes in, covers up tight defense, and who said by his own admission he's, he's a counterpuncher. So Ricky's got to fight a very smart fight, and I think he's doing a good job. Mixing up the boxing, moving away, clinching, doing whatever is necessary to try to win the championship. We've been amazed over the years at how accurately CompuBox can predict who's going to win a fight based on numerical formulas. Hatton said that he had distractions prior to fighting Colazzo in Boston. It made it difficult for him to put forth his best performance. Stop. Fighting at 147, last May, he averaged 62 punches thrown per round. Tonight, back at 140 pounds, throwing 69 punches per round. It's only a seven-punch difference, but round by round by round, it adds up. You do that for 10 rounds, you've thrown 70 more punches than you did a year ago. Stop. In fact, about 95% of the fights are normally won by whoever throws the most punches. Go in, go in. I want more. Listen to me, Bricker. Listen to me. You've got to fucking suck it up now, but you've got to be smart. When you stand off, he nails you, and he knows. I don't give a fuck about you winning the rounds. Do you understand? Please trust me. You've just got to get through this now. You know what I mean? There's Matthew Hatton, a winner on the undercard early this evening. It's got to be tough on your ego to be number two in the family when number one is somebody with the glamour of Brother Ricky. You're winning. You're in miles in front. Don't throw it away. You can lose this now if you don't keep it together. Don't stay away because you're staying here when you're pulling back. You're ready. You're ready to go. Three, four punches. Come on. Let's go. Be continuous. Come on. Throw punches. Don't let them recuperate. Round 10 begins. And you heard Billy Graham trying to impress upon Ricky Hatton a sense of urgency. You could lose this fight if you slow down. Could he? 
Here's Harold Letterman's scorecard. <laughs> you know, Jim, that's the strangest instructions I ever heard in my life. 88 to 83, seven rounds to two, Ricky Hatton. At the end of round eight, he told Ricky Hatton, just tie the guy up. Ricky Hatton spent the entire ninth round holding the guy. He didn't even throw a punch. He held him for a solid three minutes. Now he's doing the same thing. Why Billy Graham is taking a guy that's winning every round out of his game plan is totally beyond me. But be as it may, Hatton's way ahead. Seven rounds to two, 88, 83. I have the same score. That's a line we don't always hear. Well, the rounds have always been to the clear, except for the one round where you rang, I think, hit him with a right hand to the body, hit Ricky Hatton. But other than that, it's like a pattern round. And Ricky just outboxing him, uh, better ring generalship. Oh, they rip each other with hooks. And it appeared that Urango's hook did more damage, but Hatton jumps on him and comes back. Urango, you notice when he throws his left hand, Urango, it, no, 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 he's no. very seldom effective with his left hand because it, it just, it's not his natural power punch. Stop, stop. Most all of his power comes from right hand punches. And he only throws about seven jabs around, so let's face it, he's mostly a right hook fighter. Right, and even though he had a good exchange there, as the round progress is, you're going to see Ricky take the more control again, and Urango probably fall back once again to being too slow and ineffective like he just did there with that left hand. Either. And by the way, Billy Graham made, in Harold Letterman's opinion, say the wrong thing to Ricky stop, stop. Hatton between rounds, but during the rounds, the fans keep up the intensity and keep encouraging their man to go, go, go. What is it that uh, Urango needs now? A, he needs a troop surge. Well, he's just, he's, first of all, he's not a one-punch guy, which he's fighting <laughs> like he's the guy that's going to knock somebody out with one punch. And, and, and just he's just too slow. It looks like his well, body is too tight. Of, muscle. He's too they, slow. A lot of the guys he fought, he, he could do that too. Uh, you know, Ricky had this is his 41st fight. I guess you can really see the experience showing. And this no, is 41 fights against quality competition, which makes a difference too. Be interesting to see if uh, everybody in Jose Luis Castillo's dressing room is still seated in a fixed position and watching intently as was the case before or whether by now they've begun to relax and disperse a little bit about the room thinking okay we're gonna be all right ricky's gonna cruise on in here and we'll set that big money date up Good i think they are hand. relaxed i think they're very comfortable with stop, the way stop. the fight is going because your hasn't shown anything that he's going to land in the big devastating one punch knock knockout punch Durango is about a six to one underdog and he's fighting like it. Two rounds, we got two rounds. You gotta one. knock him down. You gotta knock him down. You gotta beat him. You gotta come out and beat him. Think of, think of it well. Throw with the left and the right up. With the left to the body and then the other one up top. You understand? Your right hand has to hit his body up top. Come on, hit his head up top. And left down, the right up top. Okay, six minutes, two more times, and then we'll go on. Yeah? And we'll get through this. We'll get through this. And you love the title. Don't yep. get crazy now. Don't get crazy. Everybody goes through this. Every fighter goes through this. Everyone has to come somebody sometime. And what was that line? Everybody has to watch somebody sometime? To, to... We need, we need a, an interpreter in stop, Hatton's stop, corner. Stop, stop. <laughs> Where they speak English. <laughs> yeah. We you know, a, the, uh, what is the line? We have a common heritage in different languages. Honestly, well, <laughs> coincidentally, honestly, the Lampley honestly. family stop, stop, began stop. in Manchester, England. But I don't understand it. <laughs> Can't help you. We're in the 11th of a scheduled 12 rounds, and at no point has Juan Urango stepped stop, stop. up the pace in such a way as to really change the tempo of the fight. Only in one round, when he threw more body punches than Patton and landed them and seemed momentarily to be gaining momentum. But since that time, it's been Hatton energy, Hatton energy. 
You know, Harold Letterman talked about the rounding, which had to seem to slow down and hold. Good right hand by him. Excellent right hook. He does it every once in a while. But Hatton just keeps coming. And that, the reason that he's not doing any better is two things. One, his, in his own mind, I think he doesn't realize that he needs to step up the pace and he doesn't have any urgency because he feels he's winning. And the next thing is he's just too slow. But I think more so than that, he really believes he's winning the fight. Now there's the headbutt, which I predicted would happen back in round two. Finally, it takes place. And Urongo, who earlier got a rest for a low blow, gets time now to recover from the butt. Okay, let's stand right here. You want, you want, you want time? You want time? Uh, Hatton might finish the fight without bleeding, incidentally, and that doesn't happen okay, all that often. Okay, what? No. Uh, okay, watch the Eddie Porter Come on. That's a time mark of the fact go. that Urango's basically a one-handed fighter. The way you get a guy to bleed is to hit him with something he doesn't see coming. And Ricky sees most of what Urango throws. There's a left hand by Urango, landed on the chin of Hatton. Finally. Stop, stop, stop. Rick is tied a little bit down, so he sort of landing punches and angling and moving away. He's now landing punches and then moving in and smothering Urango. Yep, taking a break. Out. He, stop, stop. he takes the break by smothering. Then he gets an impulse and he says, okay, I'll throw three uppercuts. Boom, boom, boom. And then he holds again, gets it, another little rest. The fact that he can get away with whatever he chose is because Urango is just too slow. And now palpably holding. This happened also in the Colazzo fight. Yeah, this is this is the ugly part of Hatton's game. It's you know he he's crowd pleasing for everybody from his hometown. But this is not going to win a lot of friends every place. Well, it can't all be Arturo Gatti and never hold. Do nothing other than just hit, 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 and get hit. Yeah, but when, if this is one punch and hold. It's, it's a smart tactic because he's way ahead of the cards. But it's an ugly round. But it's. I think we've seen about as many jabs tonight as there are snow plows in Las Vegas. You've thrown more jabs <laughs> than they have, Larry. Here's the headbutt. Right here, you see that definitely accidental headbutt right there. And it's amazing that Ricky Hatton didn't get any kind of injury to his jaw. And there's the answer to the Castillo question. Nobody has moved. That is a live shot. They are going to sit there and watch all 36 minutes and make certain that that big purse stays in place. Be violent, be violent. That's a tremendous fight, tremendous fight. Get some water on him. You don't lay no fucker down. You only feel under chin out to try and get beat. Yeah. It isn't too often that we see a fighter with an MBE, an order of the British Empire, undefeated and looking like he's going to stay that way. Well, the crowd rose to start the 12th round to their feet, urging their man to close the show. He's fighting for the first time on the Vegas Strip. He says it's been his dream ever since he was a child, rooting for Roberto Duran to come to this town and take his place among the great fighters in the sport. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Joe Calzaki of Wales, the other huge British star, the unbeaten champion at 168 pounds, is 42-0. Ricky Hatton is trying to win this fight and move his record to 42 and up. Well, I think he's did that. He realized that he's won the fight now, and his mind seems to be just on not getting knocked out, surviving, and, uh, and grabbing a victory, even though it may not be an impressive last round, but just taking the win and going on and moving towards his fight with Castillo or whoever. That's pretty much what happened against Calazzo. This doesn't seem to have been as close a fight. But this will, this will leave us with both a lot of positive things to say and question marks about Hatton as he goes forward toward a fight with Castillo, who was clearly subpar tonight, but escaped with a narrow decision win against Herman and Gujo. You know, Rango is still a somewhat difficult opponent to fight to some degree. Very physically strong man, takes a great punch, and 
It's always coming in, putting pressure on you. Southpaw. Southpaw. And Ricky realized, I think, early on that he couldn't hurt him. Especially with those gloves. Ten ounce <laughs> gloves, as we mentioned. Both fighters fighting for the very first time in their careers in ten ounce gloves. Because the state of Nevada instituted a rule requiring all fighters above 135 pounds to wear them. Whereas around the rest of the world, the dividing line is 154. Personally, I really don't think I like the 10 ounce gloves on these small guys like this. That's one point of view. I don't like seeing Lavander Johnson beaten into a hospital and ultimately into a grave stop, stop. by constant hammering at the yeah. hands of Jesus Chavez. But that would have been with any ounce of gloves. It would have taken us 12. When you get hit with that many blows to the head, you know, it's going to take that effect. I don't think that was really due to the size of the gloves. Head and body. It yeah. wasn't just the head attack. Chavez is a major league body puncher. Tremendous puncher. Left hook by Hatton. He's put up a little bit of a show of energy here in the 12th. He's still using that clinching tactic every once in a while to get a break. Afterward, he can say, well, that was because he ran goes a southpaw, and he was coming forward, too, and he was falling into my arms. But the fact of the matter is, you're right, Emmanuel. He uses it to gain energy. And as the bell sounds, Urango begins celebrating as though he thinks he scored the big upset, and Hatton comes to the corner and stands on the ropes to cater to his crowd, and clearly, both men think they won. And Urango's cornermen start lifting him up on their shoulders. This may be act as if, but they can't change the scorecards now. Maybe they know something that we don't know. The fighter who judges his own fights is, is like a client who acts as his own lawyer. Not the smartest thing in the world. No importa, pero la victoria es tuya. Yo tengo la victoria ganada. Let's take a look at who the official judges will be for this fight. Robert Hoyle, not all that terribly experienced, but we know him. He was in Germany last year and had Vladimir Klitschko well ahead of Chris Bird in their second fight when Klitschko knocked Bird out. Blind man could have scored that fight. Dave Moretti, one of the best in the sport. Again, one of the five of six judges who scored Jermaine Taylor over Bernard Hopkins in Taylor's two fights against Hopkins here in Nevada. The only dissenter was Jerry Roth. And he is perhaps the most experienced and best known judge in the sport outside of, say, Harold Letterman. And he is the one out of six Las Vegas judges who thought that Hopkins had beaten Jermaine Taylor in the first of their two fights. And now Michael Buffer stands by once again with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. All three judges, Robert Hoyle, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth score the bout 119-109 to the winner by unanimous decision from Manchester, England. The winner, still undefeated and new, IBF, IBO, light welterweight champion of the world, Ricky Hitman I know CompuBox numbers, and you saw the official judges gave Hatton even more credit than did our own Harold Letterman. Urango landing 105 fewer. Hatton throwing 205 more. Hatton landing at a significantly higher percentage. Power punches. Maybe this is where Urango thought he had done something, but Hatton landing 96 more. Throwing 152 more, and again, landing at a significantly higher percentage. So the CompuBox numbers match with the scores. Ricky Hatton cruises through. If all goes well later this year, we may have Hatton against Castillo. Larry Merchant stands by with the Manchester Star. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Ricky. You said before the fight you weren't going to fight fire with fire, and for at least the first half of the fight, it seemed that you were giving him a boxing lesson. Was that the plan? It was, yeah, but he was, um, 
he was very, very tough. And um, I like to think I showed a boxing brain. I knew when to uh, tie him up, smuggle his work, you know, and when to box on the outside. And, you know, it, the way I fight and the way Juan Urango fights, it was always going to be uh, tough. But I think I showed another side to me, to myself, a clever fight. So you consciously decided that after literally cruising through him as a boxer that you felt you had he he pressured you into changing yeah. what you were doing no like all my heroes <laughs> and i think two gatti springs to mind that first four and six round we look like we look like willie pep and then <laughs> for some reason the last six we we go a bit like joe frazier but um no i mean uh, i think i boxed a smart fight don't think i was at my best it was a a big fight for me, moving back down the weight. I felt better for moving down the weight, but um, the way he fights, the way I fight, so it was always going to be a struggle, and I never make life easy for myself. Were you just de defending what you knew was a lead in the last two, three rounds? Yeah, I um, I don't wish to be disrespectful to Wanya Rango, but the first maybe four, five, six rounds felt comfortable. Maybe I took my foot off the uh, the gas. Your hair sticking up, Larry. Oh, thank you. Maybe it took me uh, foot <laughs> off the gas a little bit, but you know, uh, I think I boxed a smart fight. A very durable opponent. Uh, he will take some shifting by anyone, you know. Did you watch Castillo's fight? And if you did, were you very anxious about the outcome? Um, yeah, obviously I wanted him to win, and uh, I kept glancing down at the monitor in, uh, in my changing room. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, it's a super fight, you know. Uh, I like to think I'm in the top 10 pound for pound, and uh, obviously most people would have Castillo in the top 10 pound for pound. Well, those are people you want to fight against, so it was very important that he won and that he made the weight. I mean, I'm a little fatty and I have to make the weight, so it's nice to see Jose make it as well. Well, as you put it, you both have the same disease. You can't walk past the yeah. Burger King. Yeah, we have that same disease. Disease in our legs, we can't walk past McDonald's, Burger King. And that. I put three pound on walking past McDonald's, let alone <laughs> going in it. So uh, I think I would be a bit more disciplined in my approach in that area. Thank you very much, Ricky, and we're looking forward to you and Castillo. Jim? Okay. All right.